fully functional board, there are some small parts needed to make it complete, like a fin, a leash attachment point, a vent, and a carrying handle. Additionally, it would be nice to have some mounting points on the deck for rigging so that I can tie down any items I'd like to bring along on a paddle. All of these parts are custom made, so let's get going and see how that was done. Let's start off with some tie down fittings. I'm going to model these after some similar ones I made for a kayak project, but with a couple of differences to suit this build. These are going to be recessed into the deck and will provide a mounting point for some elastic cord that will be stretched across the deck. They can also function as a mounting point for a leash, so I'll just make an extra one for that purpose. The plan is to add four tie down points in front of the standing area and two behind it for a bit more storage capacity. The leash mount will be centered toward the back of the board. Now I've seen these sorts of things made with a lathe or CNC router, but I don't have either of these in my shop, so I devised a multi-step plan to make them with a drill press, a router, a bandsaw, and some fairly common tooling. The first tool is a 1 and 1 8 inch hole saw. This is totally optional, but I wanted to use it to make a colored ring around the fitting that matches the center stripe on the board. Next is a common 3 16 inch drill bit to drill the hole for the stainless steel cross piece. A 3 quarter inch Forstner bit is going to drill the main hole in the center of the fitting. The key tool in this process is a 1 and a quarter inch plug cutter. These are a bit harder to find, but are essential to cut the outer diameter of the fitting as well as the shoulder that sits against the inside of the deck. Last up is a 3 quarter inch round nose router bit. It's going to be mounted in the drill press and it may not be the optimal tool for rounding the bottom of the hole, but it gets the job done when used carefully. To start off, I realized I didn't have a thick enough piece of maple for this, so I glued two thinner pieces together. There is enough material here to make a few extra fittings just in case one gets damaged during the machining process. The first operation was to cut a shallow round groove for the colored epoxy ring. Having a pilot drill in the center of the hole cutter is essential here to help align everything for later drilling operations. I filled the circles with epoxy and, once cured, ran the whole thing through the planer a few times to make a nice flat surface on top. The next step is going to be to drill the side holes that the metal rod is going to go through. So I'm going to mark those out and cut them on the drill press. With the side holes drilled through, I used a quarter inch bit and the previously drilled pilot hole to realign the blank in the drill press. At this point, the center hole was drilled part way down and without moving anything, I switched over to the plug cutter for the outside diameter and shoulder operation. Unfortunately, the entire blank had to be realigned for each part, but it really didn't take very long. Here's what we have so far. The last step is going to be to use this round nose bit to uh, round the bottom of each hole. It's not really the ideal tool, but it's the best way I can come up with to do this. The key here is to make sure the round nose bit is perfectly centered and then to feed it down very slowly. There were some chatter marks on a few parts, but they sanded away later on. The next operation was to round over the inside edge using a 8th inch round over bit with a guide bearing. This produced a nice round for the elastic cord to sit on and also makes for a smooth look once mounted to the deck. From here each fitting was cut free from the blank and the bottom half was rounded over using a vertical belt sander. The bottom will never be seen once installed, but I'll always know what they look like and why not drop a little weight wherever possible. It took a bit of hand sanding to clean everything up at this point and then a coat of epoxy was brushed on to seal any bare wood. Here's the finished product, minus the stainless steel rod that was pushed through later on and sealed with a bit more epoxy. The vent fitting is very similar to the tie downs and it started out using the same steps as before. Here's the big deviation from the tie downs. What I need is basically a ring that could be glued to another piece that has the vent fitting threaded into it. Think of it as a tie down cut in half and then glued back together with a threaded hole in the middle. Here's the bottom piece and this is the finished product. The next part to make is the fin. I went a little overboard on this one because I wanted it to be removable but didn't want to use a purchase piece. I did end up using a commercially made fin from another board as a template though. Here I'm laying out some 3 8 inch thick maple pieces so that they cover the outline of the fin with about a half inch overlap on the inside. With a snap of the fingers, the pieces were glued together and ready for the next step. I made a plywood template that's a little larger than the fin. With a straight cut router bit and a bushing, the inside edge of the fin was cut out. This will actually make more sense in a minute. I then cut out the excess material with a jigsaw and cleaned up the inner edge on the router with a flush cut bit. To fill in the center of the fin, a blank of dark cedar was glued up and flattened. Next, I used the same template but with a different diameter bushing to cut this piece out. As before, it was trimmed and cleaned up, resulting in a piece that fits snugly into the maple outline. 
But before gluing all this together, I used the inner piece as a router guide by leaving it slightly proud of the maple and, with another bushing on the handheld router, cut a nice even border. Finally, the two pieces were glued together and sanded smooth. Now they're ready for some hand shaping. To do this, I marked some guidelines and a center line on the fin and used a spoke shave and some sanding sticks to put a nice airfoil shape on the blank. With it all smooth and rounded, a layer or two of fiberglass was laminated to both sides. I tried using a bit of a different method here by sandwiching the fin between two layers of release film and some closed cell foam. Clamping it all together with some plywood panels and clamps put a nice even pressure on the fiberglass cloth and squeezed out some excess resin. I'm not sure it makes much of a difference in the end, but it was simple enough, so why not? With the first layer cured, I added a fill coat of epoxy and then trimmed the upper portion of the fin to its final shape. Next, some holes for mounting were drilled. I first drilled these oversized, then filled them in with epoxy and redrilled the correct size hole later on. This ensured the wood was sealed and added some durability where the metal hardware makes contact. One hole is for a horizontal pin and the other for a screw that holds the fin onto a track in the board. I'll try to explain how this all works in the next clip. Alright, for the fin box I made this blank and this is actually both sides so I'm going to be cutting it in half later on. I routed a groove down the middle and a couple other slots in there and I'm going to fill that with epoxy and then route a very narrow channel through it. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because the fin that I'm going to be making uh, this is the one I'm, I'm modeling it after, this is the purchased one, it has a pin on the end here, and that pin will slide down into the track, and then the front end of the fin will be screwed down. So that allows for an aft adjustment and to take it out. So uh, I have this done, next step is going to be to just cap the ends with some tape and then fill it with epoxy. With the epoxy hardened, a layer of fiberglass was added on both sides for added strength and abrasion resistance. The final step was to route the groove for the fin pin to slide in. Here's the final part minus a bit of sanding to clean it up. The last small part to make was the carrying handle. The idea here is to provide a finished looking oval handhold that's comfortable, which mainly means it has a nice rounded edge. Like most of the other small parts, it started with a piece of maple and another router template. I used two different size bushings on the router to cut the inner and outer faces of the ring that will protrude through the deck. These are only cut about as deep as the deck is thick. The inner material was removed using a hole saw and a jigsaw, and then it was cleaned up on the router table using a flush cut bit. Next, the inner edges were rounded over to provide that comfortable gripping surface I mentioned before. The last operation was to remove the remaining material from the top side of the handle. This created the shoulder surface that would be glued to the bottom of the deck. And that's it for the small parts. In the next video, I'm going to measure twice and then cut a bunch of holes in the deck to install these small parts. I'll also finish off the interior of the hull and seal it forever by attaching the bottom sheet permanently. It's really starting to come together now. Stay tuned, and as always, subscribe if you haven't, and thanks for watching.